After getting the subpoena, you delete 33,000 emails, and then you acid wash them, or bleach them, as you would say, a very expensive process. So we're going to get a special prosecutor, and we're going to look into it, because you know what? People have been, their lives have been destroyed for doing one-fifth of what you've done, and it's a disgrace, and honestly, you ought to be ashamed of Secretary yourself. Secretary Clinton, I want to follow let, up let, on that. Yeah, I'm going to let, let you just talk about email. Because everything he just said is absolutely false, but I'm not oh, surprised. Really? In the first debate, and in the really, first the debate, audience needs to I calm told down people here. that it would be impossible to be fact-checking Donald all the time. I'd never get to talk about anything I want to do and how we're going to really uh, make lives better for people. So, once again, go to HillaryClinton.com. We have literally Trump. You can fact check him, fact check, fact check him in real time. Last time at the first debate, we had millions of people uh, fact checking. So I expect we'll have millions more fact checking uh, because, you know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs>
50% share of the vote, incredibly tight, but not as tight as it was last time round. Last time, you might remember, it was never called at all. 100% of the precincts in, they are confident that this goes in the red tally for Donald Trump, and that is why it matters. 29 electoral college votes. With that now on the map, he can do practically anything. Let's just have a look at it, and you'll see what I mean. He's coloured in Florida. His tally has shot up to 222. He's now short by 48. If I take you into my calculator mode and show you what that means, if he adds in Arizona, which was won by Romney last time round, if he takes Iowa, won by Romney last time round, if he takes Georgia, where he's ahead, if he takes Alaska, let's put that in, that one is in no doubt, he's only short by 12. What that means at this stage is that he can take Michigan or Pennsylvania or a combination of Wisconsin and New Hampshire, plus we can assume one or two, probably main two there, then he has done it. He hasn't done it yet. And all those races are still very heated and very on. And it's important to notice that at this point, the only states he's actually taken, the only ones that have changed hands are Ohio and Florida. But we began the night by saying, for Donald Trump to really find his path, he needs to take Florida and Ohio and Pennsylvania. He needs to take some combination or pretty much all three of those. He's taken two of them. Suddenly, it's all looking much more possible tonight. It uh, does indeed. Let's uh, get some more pictures of the celebrations uh, among the Mr. Trump's uh, supporters. You wouldn't want to count your chickens before they're hatched, Catty. But if you were in the Trump campaign, you were beginning to think we've done it. And I... Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Wow. Donald Trump has picked up the 29 electoral votes from Florida, and that is a stunner. Uh, by almost all the latest tracking polls in the Sunshine State, Hillary Clinton was ahead anywhere from two. One survey had her ahead five points. In the end, she loses this state. There's going to be a lot of hand-wringing about what happened, but he picks up those 29 electoral votes. We're Futures, people betting on what's going to happen, or people putting their uh, state, making their stakes in terms of what's going to happen at market, op market opening, down nearly 700 points tonight, uh, with Donald Trump having such a better night than a lot of people thought he would. The Dow futures were not on the minds of the people who have turned vast stretches of our country red this evening. We have a call, the state of Florida. What we are terming the apparent winner, Donald Trump, in the state of Florida, 29 electoral votes, the apparent winner terminology, here is the electoral math, 216 Trump, 209 Clinton, the race for 270, here's how it plays out visually. So much talk about the paths to 270. 228 to 209. Uh, again, the number that you're going for here is 270. That's the number of electoral votes that you need in order to uh, win the presidency. Steve. Uh, this is, you know, Trump and Clinton had both said they were going to win places like California and New York and New Jersey and so on. They never really moved out of the presumed. Uh, Democrat column, but we also we have, have a big call to make now. A big now. call right now. Donald Trump will win the state of Florida. According to the Fox News decision desk, he will win the 29 electoral votes in Florida. A very tight race, but he is pulling that off. As you can see, the crowds outside here cheering. 49% to 47% right now, but we can project that he is going to win Florida. That means... He has won Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio. This is the, the triple states that he needed to win to make the path possible. And you, as you just saw, Megan, upstairs, it's very possible as of this moment. If you, if you need the inside straight, he is well on his way, way although it's not yet over. Looks it like it's gonna be and it's that time of the night again. I've got to break in. We've got news. Hari, Judy. And we have a call to make. This is a big one. The state of Florida, which has uh, held other presidential elections in the balance, 
we are projecting that Donald Trump uh, will be the winner in the Sunshine State. Uh, you can see uh, there are still, what, uh, 10 million votes counted so far. The votes are still coming in. No, I think that's 90, is it 99 percent reporting. I can't tell if that's, yeah, if that's the enough. right number. But uh, it, it's, it's down to the wire, hurry. But uh, in terms of they waited for all the votes to come in, but Donald Trump projected to win. Amy, this makes this Hillary Clinton's it. path even tougher. big. You know, when we would do the math and the projections of how one candidate gets a 270 or another, you can take Florida off the map for Hillary Clinton. She has other pathways. But it's assuming that she wins Wisconsin and Michigan and New Hampshire. Those are not a given. To say the least. All right, we have another major projection right now. Take a look at this. And CNN projects Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida with its 29 electoral votes. Donald Trump wins Florida. A huge win for Donald Trump. That's his second home in Florida. Donald Trump will carry those 29 electoral votes. He's ahead right now with 98% of the vote in by more than 131,000 votes. A big win for Donald Trump in Florida. He predicted he would win Florida. He has won Florida. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map right now. You see Donald Trump has taken the lead. He has 216 electoral votes compared to Hillary Clinton's 197 electoral votes, 270 needed to win the White House. But it's a big, big win for Donald Trump in Florida. Uh, Jake and Dan, a lot of people didn't think that Donald Trump would be able to do it. He did it in Florida. He did. A huge prize, 29 electoral votes uh, where his second home is at Mar-a-Lago. And I think we should take a moment and talk about Florida. Because, as you said, it was something that Donald Trump said he was going to win, said he needed to win. It looks like he obviously we projected that he has won it. And it just shows that there are big questions as to who this electorate is. Because looking at the early vote, part of the reason why Democrats were so bullish about Florida and part of the reason why Republicans uh, were so pessimistic was because of the, what they thought was a big surge in the Latino vote. So at the end of the day, we'll see what that Latino vote was, particularly uh, newly uh, bigger Puerto Rican uh, areas in the I-4 corridor. And if that surge really happened, and if it did, which way do they vote? Yeah. Okay, big call now, uh, one that we've been waiting for since the minute uh, we signed on, and that is Florida. Uh, it is going into the Donald Trump column, and that shows you with 222 electoral college votes uh, for Donald Trump, 198 for Hillary Clinton. The math continues not to work in her favor. Let's go back to uh, uh, Ashley, David, and uh, Danielle on this one. It, it's awfully hard to come up with a scenario now where he doesn't win. Those are three big X's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. North Carolina, mm -hmm. gone. Yep. Florida, gone. Ohio, gone. Looking like they Wisconsin. needed. Looking they, like Wisconsin also gone. And, well, gone. and you know she had to keep her blue wall. She had to keep Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Pennsylvania's looking good. Michigan and Wisconsin not so good. But she had to add one of those three, and they are all three gone. This and is looking really dire for it's, her. It's. We will continue to have a conversation about it. She will get somewhere over the 200 mark, and then we will stall. Like, and that's this is this is a wrap. We had states that should have never been in play. In play, we had Michigan in play. What what happened in Michigan today? We're looking at this map, and this is like the worst scenario. This is like Obama opposite. When we had, in 2012, we were looking at the polls and we saw Mitt Romney and all the polls said that Mitt Romney was, you know, five points ahead of Barack Obama. And they said, oh, he's, you know, he's right there. Then all of a sudden, Election Day comes in. It was pretty much like a landslide for Obama. And I said then, I said, you know what? Polls, you can't really trust them. And I had, and I said that people said, oh, no, you can't say that. Yeah, you can. Because polls are determined by the questions that you ask, how you ask those questions, how they're worded, who you're talking to, where you're talking to them from. No one ever breaks down the demographics of who they're talking to or where they're talking to these people. What we thought to be true, though, two weeks ago, when we saw that video being leaked, the Access Hollywood video with Billy Bush on there, and we said, Trump is done. 
but this is the man that they are backing. So we know that America's religious values and moral center is also nonsense, much like the polls were. David, um, if it is a Donald Trump presidency, what happens in the next two years is just astonishing. It's probably a very short run for the Republicans, by the way, because they will outrun the mandate, they will be very radical, and then there'll be a reckoning in 2018. And there will be this, um, I, I don't think this is a good day for American democracy, but is, I don't think this is the last American election. Um, That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and Secretary Clinton, I do want to follow up on emails. You've said your handling of your emails was a mistake. You disagreed with Director FBI Director James Comey calling your handling of classified information, quote, extremely careless. The FBI said that there were 110 classified emails that were exchanged, eight of which were top secret, and that it was possible hostile actors did gain access to those emails. You don't call that extremely careless? Well, Martha, first let me say, and I've said it before, but I'll repeat it because I want everyone to hear it. That was a mistake. And I take responsibility for using a personal email account. Uh, obviously, if I were to do it over again, I would not. I'm not making any excuses. Uh, it was a mistake, and I am very uh, sorry about that. But I think it's also important uh, to point out where there are some misleading accusations from critics and others. Uh, after a year-long investigation, there is no evidence that anyone hacked the server I was using. And there is no evidence that anyone uh, can point to at all, anyone who says otherwise has no basis, that any classified material ended up in the wrong hands. I take classified materials very seriously and always have. When I was on the Senate Armed Services Committee, I was privy to a lot of classified material. Obviously, as Secretary of State, I had some of the most important secrets uh, that we possess, such as going after bin Laden. Uh, so I am very committed to taking classified information seriously. And as I said, there is no evidence uh, that any classified information ended up in the wrong hands. Okay, we're going to move on. And yet, she didn't know the word, the letter C on a document, right? She didn't even know what that word, what that letter meant. You know, it's amazing. I'm watching Hillary go over facts. And she's going after fact after fact. And she's lying again because she said she, you know, what she did with the emails was fine. You think it was fine to delete 33,000 emails? I don't think so. She said the 33,000 emails had to do with her daughter's wedding, number one, and a yoga class. Well, maybe we'll give three or three or four or five or something. 33,000 emails deleted. And now she's saying there wasn't anything wrong. And more importantly, that was after getting a subpoena. That wasn't before. That was after. She got it from the United States Congress. And I'll be honest, I am so disappointed in congressmen, including Republicans, for allowing this to happen. Our Justice Department, where her husband goes onto the back of an airplane for 39 minutes, talks to the Attorney General days before a ruling is going to be made on her case. But for you to say that there was nothing wrong with you deleting 39,000 emails, again, you should be ashamed of yourself. What you did, and this is after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress. We have to move if on. Secretary Clinton, that, you can respond, minute, and then we got to move on. We want to give the audience the a, sector, a, a chance here. in jail, let alone after getting a subpoena from the United States Secretary Congress. Secretary Clinton, you can respond, then we have to move on to an audience question. Look. It's just not true, and so please you, oh, go. Oh, you didn't delete them? Allow her to respond, them. please. Personal emails, not oh, official. Over 33,000? Yeah, not, right. Well, we turned over 35,000, so oh, yeah. it was. What about the other 15,000? Uh, please allow her to respond. She didn't talk while you talked. Yes, that's true. I didn't. Because and you I didn't nothing in to the say. first debate, and uh, I'm going to try not to in this debate because uh, I'd like to get to the questions that the people have brought here tonight uh, to talk to us about. And get off this question. Okay, Donald, I know you're into big diversion tonight, anything to avoid talking about your campaign and the way it's exploding and the way Republicans are leaving you. But let's, let's, let's at least focus on some of the let's issues see what that people care about tonight. Let's get to their question. We have a question here from Ken Karpowitz. He has a question about health care. Ken? I'd like to know, Anderson, why aren't you bringing up the emails? I'd like to know. Why aren't you we getting brought up to the, the emails. bottom? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. And it hasn't been finished at all.
a night. It, and, and a, a complete earthquake. This was an earthquake unlike any earthquake I've really seen since Ronald Reagan in 1980. It just came out of nowhere. Nobody expected. I mean, Pennsylvania, Republicans haven't won it since 88. Wisconsin, Republicans haven't won it since 84. Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 9, 2016. Welcome to CBS This Morning. Donald Trump wins the presidency in one of the greatest upsets in election history. Voters demanding a change cause a political earthquake. Something happened last night that will forever shake up the the coalitions that make up the Republican and Democratic Party. There have been many, many historic, astounding, shocking moments over the course of this campaign involving Donald Trump, starting with him entering the race on the escalator. None more shocking, though, to me than last night when we heard the report on the air from Kristen Welker that Secretary Hillary Clinton had called Donald Trump to concede the election. This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world. This is New Day. President-elect Donald J. Trump. That is the reality in America after perhaps the biggest shocker in U.S. presidential election history. President Obama has called Trump to congratulate him. The two, we're told, are going to meet on Thursday. Trump defeating Hillary Clinton soundly. The billionaire now facing the daunting task of uniting a country that he helped to divide. Uh, if Trump wins, we will at least be galvanized and united in fighting against them. Well, it appears Trump has won. So we go to the guys who made that argument. We go to Jimmy Dore. This, he's an ugly person. It's a horrible thing that has happened. Now what we have to ho hope for and try to make happen is that he's uh, such a... He's such a flawed guy that he can't help himself. He'll still keep alienating the people that he needs to govern. His surprise victory defied pre-election polling. With us now are New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd and CBS News contributor Bob Schieffer. Good morning to both of you. Um, there's a lot to sink our teeth yeah. into this. Bob, we were all sitting there last night. This is a massive Clinton failure as well. They were predicting a victory. This is a failure on, on all fronts. People were mad. I said going into this, the word to describe the electorate was anxious. There was great anxiety. It was not anxiety, it was anger. Mm. It was anger. They wanted to throw the bones out, and they did. You know, people say, what happened? The answer is it all happened, right? I mean, this was a political realignment. You talk about the Rust Belt. Donald Trump won white voters that voted for Barack Obama. Let's put those numbers yeah, up. Okay. Uh, Michigan and Wisconsin. A point. No, that's a great point because it's not just the missing white voters nope. who weren't voting in the past. It's a lot of people who voted for right. Obama. Russian President Vladimir Putin picked up the phone and called Donald Trump last night to congratulate him on his win. And today, world leaders around the world have done the same. And you could say the rest of the world woke up in shock, just like many here in the United States, to learn that the former businessman beat Secretary Hillary Clinton. And you don't need to look very hard to see how they feel about it. Trump won 274 electoral votes to become the 45th president of the United States. Joining me right now to break down exactly what happened is Paul Stern, Fox News contributor Frank Luntz. Frank, good to see you. I love this map. I love this map, too, but we have to talk about you were very sure that Clinton would win. You tweeted about it last night. I, the, what do you think happened? The exit polls have never been so wrong. And what they're going to have to do is they have to throw it, throw it all out. Uh, Ohio, for example, that Trump won easily. The exit polls had it as a dead even heat. Pennsylvania, they had Democrats up by five. I can go state by state mm. in virtually every state. And the reason why? Trump voters wouldn't talk to pollsters. It's all part of this psyche. I'm not going to help you yeah. un undermine or destroy the country. So Trump wins Pennsylvania by a point. The poll was off by six points. That is beyond the margin of error. This was an astonishing result. Donald Trump's win is the biggest FU to all his enemies, the media, the politicians, Wall Street, Hollywood. Stop bullying and patronising the silent majority or they will rise in terrible revolt. PGIO, thank God that it's over. Cold. Is it over or is it just beginning? Well, one nightmare is over, another is about to begin. If, uh, they, want, if they want to repeal Obamacare on day one, they can and he'll sign it. If they want to cut corporate taxes down to a third of what they are, they can and he'll sign it. I know this is, uh, we're in a tough spot here as Americans. 
Uh, this is what happens when the media and the Democratic Party are in bed together, I guess. This is what happens. Right? Strategist Ben Ginsburg joins us, an ad man, now spokesman for Xanax, Donny Deutsch. Donny Deutsch, I bet you would give up your supply of HGH for a week yes. if last night hadn't have turned out the way it did. Would you yeah. do that? Uh, yeah, I would give up a lot. Look, <laughs> this election was always about fear. Fear of the status quo. Right. And fear of the kind of temperamentally unknown. And the fear of the status quo won. And unfortunately, this morning, and half of this country was going to wake up very afraid this morning either way. Right. As you said earlier in the Good show, point. if I was a factory worker in Scranton, I'd be afraid. But right now, if um, you're a Muslim, you're very afraid in this country. If you have a child that's bullied in school, you are terrified in this country. If you're a woman that's in a kind of a, sometimes maybe getting a little harassed at work, you're afraid this morning. If you're a young African American, you're afraid this morning. We were just talking to your lovely wife, Jane, in the green room, and she says, You too stayed up like a lot of people, very late to watch the returns. And it started out as, you know, Senator, a coronation for her. We heard words, it's a lock, it's a route, it's going to be her night. By the end of the night, we all know it went, it turned south very, very uh, quickly, we could say, by the end of the day. Uh, let's not forget, in the midst of that dismal night, she did end up winning. More votes than Mr. Yeah, she, ha she did win the popular vote. But ultimately, what do you think went wrong? Today she's blaming James Comey in the, the letters. This is what I think went wrong, is what Trump did uh, very effectively is tap the angst and the anger and the hurt and the pain that millions of working class people are feeling. And what he said is, I, Donald Trump, I'm going to be a champion of the working class. That's the word he used. I know you're working longer hours for low wages. You're seeing your jobs go to China. You can't afford child care, can't afford to send your kids to college. I, Donald Trump, alone, I can solve these problems. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to today on a Wednesday morning. The nation is waking up to a stunning upset. Donald Trump is the president-elect of the United States. Anything new happen in your political world overnight? <laughs> the voters have spoken and done so in resounding fashion. The political world remade. The map remade. Every assumption people make about politics undone. You, we handed unli almost unlimited power to a fascist wannabe. Buckle up. So are you not deeply, deeply concerned about that? Yes, of course I am. I mean, we warned them. And so Bernie Sanders gave people something to vote for, to come out for, and people did in droves. So did Trump, by the way. He was still filling stadiums to the last day. Hillary couldn't get five people to come here and talk. And so, again, everybody sticks their head in the sand and just keeps, oh, hopefully the donors are right this time. The Democratic Party completely turned their back on workers. They got in bed with Wall Street and Silicon Valley. This is the result. A lot of people said he didn't have as good a ground game as she did, he didn't have as, uh, as much money as she did, which was all true, but he was right to focus on the Rust Belt. He and was right to focus on states like Michigan. He took he, a trip there a number of times. And he played it differently. He has 25 million followers, either in Twitter or in Facebook. No one's ever had that. More people could hear from Donald Trump directly than hear from all the media outlets combined. So he has changed politics as we know it. It's incredible. Frank, good to see you. Thank you so much. Tell me one thing. Yeah. When do I get to go to sleep? But in the ballot box, those voters cut loose and they chose as their next president a man with zero political experience. A man vilified in the media as a sexist and a racist and a neo-Nazi hothead likely to drop the nuclear bomb. Well, maybe he is some of that. But how much did voters loathe that Washington class that they'd still rather have Trump, who at least vowed to clean up the corrupt political elite? But I think in the country at large, there was no reverse Bradley effect. It was just people who were going to vote for Donald Trump no matter what. No matter what. No matter what he said, no, more, no matter what he did, no matter how he behaved, they were determined to vote for Donald Trump, and they were ignored. They were yeah. ignored by pollsters, they were ignored by the media, and they showed up yesterday in astounding numbers, a wave of people. Great to have all of you here. Good morning. Hillary, I know this is not how you expected last night to go. How are you getting your mind around this morning? Um, uh, it's scary. I'm scared. Sanctimonious commentators will claim this result proves that every second American must be a cretin. And Hillary Clinton herself fed this fantasy. She disastrously indulged in exactly the kind of abuse during the campaign that makes the left so contemptible. Everything that he's talked about, everything that we've all talked about, they could have seen it coming. They could, you know, 
but the media was all in on this narrative. And it was, it was just everybody was marching in lockstep. Clinton's going to win. Clinton's going to win. Early voting came out, and I was doing those little 270 to win maps. I immediately looked at early voting, and I moved North Carolina and Florida over, yeah. over to, to, to Trump. You would have thought I hung a Nazi flag in front of my house. Every single analyst said there was no way Trump was going to win no in Florida. No credible person has a clue as to how he has a path. Anyone. That's what we were told repeatedly. Good morning, Nora. Clinton gave no public speech, put out no public statement herself, leaving many of her supporters wondering what she thinks of this turn of events. Her campaign says she will speak today, but they have not given us a time or a place. The mood at that election party last night was astounding, going from uh, upset uh, at the end, where at first they had been jubilant. Uh, they were crying. They were shell-shocked. They were hugging each other for support as the night went on. On. So the question this morning is, what happened? Markets around the world are in turmoil at this hour over Trump's astonishing victory. So global markets are down sharply on the news of Donald Trump's victory. How will U.S. markets open today? CNN business correspondent Allison Kostick is live at the New York Stock Exchange with more. What do you predict, Allison? Good morning, Allison. I would say when markets open in a couple hours, I would say buckle up. We are seeing Dow futures down as much as 370 points. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Charlie Rose with Nora O'Donnell and Gail King in New York. Anthony Mason is with us. Trading is about to open on Wall Street. We expect dramatic losses at the opening bell as investors react to the election of Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. The markets expect uncertainty in the weeks and months ahead. Jeff Glor is on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange this morning. Jeff, good morning. What's the mood like there? I, well, and they time. were certainly dealing with that anxiety and that uncertainty all, all night long. Uh, U.S. markets did level off a bit overnight after a big swing down uh, in futures. At one point, the Dow futures were pointing to an open down 800 points. When the results of the election became clear, trading was actually halted briefly uh, but then resumed and the numbers stabilized. Here we go on the open. Um, as we wait to see where these numbers go, talking to these traders down here this morning, you know, it's, it's been very interesting. Um, they, they're aware of what Donald Trump has said about you know, ripping up some of these trade deals, revamping the tax code a lot more. They say they just don't have specifics on it. Um, so there, there is concern. They're expecting a very active day. I haven't heard anyone call it a panic day at this point. As the Dow opens down 30. And there we see Jeff. And maybe even in positive territory. with millions and millions of people discussing it on the social network. As we said a moment ago, we do want to bring in questions from voters around the country via social media. And our first stays on this topic, Jeff from Ohio asks on Facebook, Trump says the campaign has changed him. When did that happen? So Mr. Trump, let me add to that. When you walked off that bus at age 59, were you a different man or did that behavior continue until just recently. And you have two minutes talk, for this. I told you, that was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I am a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country. And certainly I'm not proud of it. But that was something that uh, happened. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously. Four of them are here tonight. One of the women 
who is a wonderful woman at 12 years old, was raped at 12. Her client, she represented, got him off, and she's seen laughing on two separate occasions, laughing at the girl who was raped. Kathy Shelton, that young woman, is here with us tonight. So don't tell me about words. I am absolutely, I apologize for those words. But it is things that people say. But what President Clinton did, he was impeached. He lost his license to practice law. He had to pay an $850,000 fine to one of the women, Paula Jones, who's also here tonight. And I will tell you that when Hillary brings up a point like that, and she talks about words that I said 11 years ago, I think it's disgraceful, and I think she should be ashamed of herself, if you want to know the truth. Can we please hold the applause? Secretary Clinton, you have two minutes. Well, first, let me start by saying that so much of what he's just said is not right, but he gets to run his campaign any way he chooses. He gets to decide what he wants to talk about. Instead of answering people's questions, talking about our agenda, laying out the plans that we have that we think can make uh, a better life and a better country, that's his choice. When I hear something like that, I am reminded of what my friend Michelle Obama advised us all. When they go low, you go high. And look, if this were just about one video, maybe what he's saying tonight would be understandable. But everyone can draw their own conclusions at this point about whether or not the man in the video or the man on the stage respects women. But he never apologizes for anything to anyone. He never apologized to Mr. and Mrs. Khan, the Gold Star family, whose son, Captain Khan, died in the line of duty in Iraq. And Donald insulted and attacked them for weeks over their religion. He never apologized to the distinguished federal judge who was born in Indiana. But Donald said he couldn't be trusted to be a judge because his parents were, quote, Mexican. He never apologized to the reporter that he mimicked and mocked on national television and our children were watching. And he never apologized for the racist lie that President Obama was not born in the United States of America. He owes the president an apology. He owes our country an apology. And he needs to take responsibility for his actions and his words. Well, you owe the president an apology because, as you know very well, uh, your campaign, Sidney Blumenthal, he's another real winner that you have. And he's the one that got this started along with your campaign manager. And they were on television just two weeks ago, she was saying exactly that. So you really owe him an apology. You're the one that sent the pictures around your campaign, sent the pictures around with President Obama in a certain garb. That was long before I was ever involved. So you actually owe an apology. And number two, Michelle Obama. I've gotten to see the commercials that they did on you. And I've gotten to see some of the most vicious commercials I've ever seen of Mo Michelle Obama talking about you, Hillary. So you talk about friend, go back and take a look at those commercials. A race where you lost, fair and square, unlike the Bernie Sanders race where you won, but not fair and square in my opinion. And all you have to do is take a look at WikiLeaks and just see what they said about Bernie Sanders and see what Deborah Wasserman Schultz had in mind because Bernie Sanders, between superdelegates and Deborah Wasserman Schultz, he never had a chance. And I was so surprised to see him sign on with the devil. But when you talk about apology, I think the one that you should really be apologizing for and the thing that you should be apologizing for are the 33,000 emails that you deleted and that you acid washed. And then the two boxes of emails and other things last week that were taken from an office and are now missing. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it, and I hate to say it, but if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general 
to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. When I speak, I go out and speak, the people of this country are furious. In my opinion, the people that have been long-term workers at the FBI are furious. There has never been anything like this where emails and you get a subpoena, you get a subpoena, and after getting the subpoena, you delete 33,000 emails. And then you acid wash them, or bleach them, as you would say, a very expensive process. So we're going to get a special prosecutor, and we're going to look into it, because you know what? People have been, their lives have been destroyed for doing one fifth of what you've done. And it's a disgrace. And honestly, you ought to be ashamed of Secretary yourself. Secretary Clinton, I want Martha, to follow let, up on that. Let, I'm going to let, let, let you talk about it now. Because everything he just said is absolutely false, but I'm not oh, surprised. Really? In the first debate, and in the really, first the debate, audience needs to I calm told down people here. that it would be impossible to be fact-checking Donald all the time. I'd never get to talk about anything I want to do and how we're going to really uh, make lives better for people. So, once again, go to HillaryClinton.com. We have literally Trump. You can fact check him, fact check, fact check him in real time. Last time at the first debate, we had millions of people uh, fact checking. So I expect we'll have millions more fact checking uh, because you know it is. Uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail, Secretary Clinton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Who's number one with Hispanics? One. Trump. Yes, you told Trump. us that earlier. I love the Mexican people and their spirit, but the country of Mexico is killing us. I want to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall. I want to build a wall. We need the wall. And Mexico will pay for the wall. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. And it's really weak to call John McCain a loser because he was a... I never dog. called him. No, I don't call that him. That is a outrageous. Loser. He's an American hero. I don't like losers. But, but Frank, He's Frank, let me get hero. to it. He's he hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. Five and a half years... He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. And then I watch this idiot Lindsey Graham on television today, and he calls me a jackass. He's a jackass. The man of the toupee. This is on the front page of the New York Times. I don't wear a toupee. I'll prove. I'll prove once and for all that it's mine, okay? Come, come. Is it mine? Look. It is. It is. Say it, please. Yes, I believe it is. Thank you. <laughs> I have such respect for women. I cherish women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several. O'Donnell. I love the women that faint when I speak. Those are the ones that love me. No, go ahead, Donald. No, I'm a gentleman, Hillary, go ahead. What I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You bragged that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. You take a look. Look at her, look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. I'm going to take such good care of women's health care issues, you won't even believe it. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that 
There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Social Such a Security nasty trust woman. Fund. But I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever done those things? have respect for me. But I'm surging with women. I think Hillary would be a terrible president. Well, I think the only card she has is the woman's card. She's got nothing else going. And frankly, if Hillary Clinton were a man, I don't think she'd get 5% of the vote. She's a world-class liar. Just look at her pathetic email server statements. She's crooked Hillary. Don't you understand that? This is one of the most crooked politicians in history. This is the legacy of Hillary Clinton. Death, destruction, terrorism, and weakness. She's the devil. Hillary Clinton is a bigot. I was going to say something Please, extremely rough to Hillary, to her family, and I said to myself, I can't do it. I just can't do it. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. She has tremendous hate in her heart. Wouldn't that be embarrassing to lose to crooked Hillary Clinton? That would be terrible. Is there anybody you'd like to apologize to right now yourself? Uh, no. No? <laughs> I think I would probably get along very well with Putin. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Hillary likes to play tough with Russia. Uh, Putin looks at her and he laughs, okay? He laughs. He'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet, no puppet. It's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It I know nothing about Russia. Talking about Gitmo, right? Guantanamo Bay. Which, by the way, which, by the way, we are keeping open. Which we are keeping open. And we're going to load it up with some bad dudes, believe me. We're going to load it up. Would I approve waterboarding? You bet your ass I'd approve it. You bet your ass. In a heartbeat. And I'd bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. I want surveillance of certain mosques, okay? If that's okay. Because they are recruiting by the thousands. They're leaving our country. And then when they come back, we take them back. Oh, come on back. Where were you? I was fighting for ISIS. Oh, come on back. Go home. Enjoy yourself. I will absolutely take database on the people coming in from Syria if we can't stop it, but we're going to. I've made it known, if I win, they're going back. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS, okay? He's the founder. He founded ISIS. And I would say the co-founder would be crooked Hillary Clinton. The, you know, if you're on a sports team, most valuable player, MVP, you get the MVP award. ISIS will hand her the most valuable player award. I thought I heard a little voice over there. I get him out. Take him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out of here. Oh, throw him the hell out of here. Am I allowed to rip that whistle out of the mouth? I'd rip that. Just... Go home to mommy. Go home. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I don't throw babies out, believe me. I love babies. Actually, I was only kidding. You can get the baby out of here. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. I always wanted to get the Purple Heart. This was much easier. If I become president, we're all going to be saying Merry Christmas again. That I can tell you. If you look at North Korea, this guy, this may, I mean, he's like a maniac. Okay? And you got to give him credit. That's a famous Mussolini quote. You retweeted it. You like the quote? Did you know it was sure. Mussolini? It's okay to know it's Mussolini. Look, Mussolini was Mussolini. It's okay to know. It's a very good quote. It's a very interesting quote. I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I don't know any, honestly, I don't know David Duke. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. Do you no, plan I... to visit with the Pope when he comes into Philadelphia? Well, the Pope believes in global warming. You do know that, right? <laughs>
Hey, in this room, it's so hot in here, maybe I'll start to believe it myself. <laughs> this room is hot. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I, oh, maybe that's what I said. Whoever the hell brought this mic system, don't be the son of a bitch to put it in, I'll tell you. He's, he's big. No, this mic is terrible. Stupid mic keeps popping. Nevada. And you know what I said? You know what I said? I said, when I came out here, I said, nobody says it the other way. It has to be Nevada. He said I had small hands. Actually, I'm 6'3", not 6'2", but he said I had small hands. They're not small, are they? I never heard, I never heard that one before. Donald Trump has small hands. So I said, small hands? These guys know. I hit a ball 280 yards. Stand up, my club champion, stand up. Do I hit the ball good? Do I hit it long? Is Trump strong? Huh? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Right. Okay. I, I think, think we, we should, should take a drug, drug test, test prior to the debate. <laughs> my mic was defective within the room. Did that explain the sniffles then? Did you see where Biden wants to take me to the back of the barn? Me. He wants it. I'd love that. I'd love that. Mr. Tough Guy. So I spent a long time this morning on making my shoes so beautiful, so shiny. And then I walked through more dusty floors than I've ever seen in my life. Thank you, Anthony Weiner. It's a rigged system. The system is totally rigged and broken. This system is rigged. We're competing in a rigged election. This is a rigged election. That you will absolutely accept the result of this election. I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. There's never been anything like this. So go and register. Make sure you get out and vote November 28th.